Hey guys, Bro Sam Ramos, and this Sunday the Miami Dolphins defeated the New England Patriots 15 to 10 and improved to two and three on the season. A much, much needed win for this Miami Dolphins team. Uh, this is their second road game and currently sit at one and one on the road. Uh, meanwhile, the Patriots are 0 and 2 at home and 1 and 4 on the season. And this is just a big time win for the Dolphins. You know, it's not necessarily just because of like the caliber of the opponent they played or whatnot. It's just they needed a win desperately to keep this season afloat. And that's exactly what they were able to do here. Uh, a win here, one, a divisional win, two, just a win in general. Just adding another notch in that column is big time for this Miami Dolphins team who has real postseason aspirations. And with how the things have been going this so far this season, it hasn't been looking like that. But I think this is something to get the Dolphins on the right track. But we also have to remember the caliber of the opponent here. Uh, it's no shade towards the Patriots, but it is the Patriots. Let's just be flat on honest here. Uh, but they did give the Dolphins a pretty good punch. But uh, the Dolphins, for some reason in this matchup, were better offensively. We'll talk about that now when we start this post-game review. All right. So, you know, it looked very bad <laughs> early throughout this game. Uh, you know, the Dolphins headed into halftime uh, down three to seven and they had missed a field goal. So, you know, you could have been within a single point here. And on top of that, there was other errors that just did not look good for this Miami Dolphins team. Uh, but somehow, some way they managed to muster up a scoring drive in the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, put those fours up. It's the uh, most important time of the, the game. All right, so we're going to go over some team stats, then we're going to hit the highlight, and then last but not least, we're going to do some box score stuff. And then after that, you're going to do, uh, you're just going to talk about the game. So let's talk about some team stats. The Dolphins uh, had more first downs than the Patriots, uh, almost 10 more. Dolphins had 24, Patriots had 15. Uh, Patriots were 4 of 13 on third down, Dolphins were 2 of 11, and then uh, both teams were 0 for 1 on fourth down. Dolphins got four uh, first downs from penalties, which is interesting because Patriots were penalized a lot in this game. But Patriots got two first downs from penalties, so uh, something to take of note. Uh, Dolphins also had one, uh, 75 total plays to the New England Patriots, 55. Uh, there was total yards were 372 for the Dolphins, 299 for the Patriots. Uh, if we keep on going down the team stats, uh, there was a discrepancy in the turnovers. Yep, two turnovers for the Dolphins. Uh, but otherwise, penalties. Dolphins had half the amount of penalties that the Patriots had. Uh, six penalties for 54 total yards. And then the Patriots had 12 penalties for a total of 105 yards. Uh, and then last but not least, in terms of team stats, time of possession. 34 minutes and 20 seconds for this Miami Dolphins team. 25 minutes and 40 seconds for the Patriots. That is huge for a team that was lacking any type of offensive consistency, having a game like this where you dominate the time of possession, you you have the better offensive game, even though it didn't seem like it most of the game. Uh, there was constant things that um, the missed field goal, the botched snap that took you out of field goal range. Like there was a lot of things going against this offense team throughout the game, and somehow, some way, he managed to muster up a win here. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the highlight. It's a little big one, uh, but this was quite the interesting game. Uh, early on in this game, lots of sacks were happening. Uh, you know, here's Ty uh, Tyler Huntley getting sacked. But, you know, the Dolphins answered with two sacks of their own. First one here with Emmanuel Ogba. And, I man, I love Ogba's sack celebration. <laughs> I think it's one of the coolest things ever. Uh, and then our big boy, Zach Sealer, closing in for the deal. I don't know if he was kind of reenacting like smashing brews or something, but man, you got to love Zach Sealer. Uh, Tyler Huntley, you know, finally connecting with the receivers, but round one this time. Uh, it was an interception throw thrown to Christian Gonzalez. Uh, and you'll see a little bit more of Christian Gonzalez throughout this highlight. Uh, but right after that, not necessarily saying next play, but shortly after that, Ramondre Stevenson, 33-yard rushing touchdown. Brissett loves it. Patriots go on top early, three to seven. And yes, the Dolphins did have a lead at some point in this game early on. Uh, and then this is a, a bit of a tragic play here. Unfortunately, uh, A-Chan gets injured here. And this is still, I think, in the first quarter. 
can see his head bounce off that turf. It, I mean, it's just not, not good. Always dealing with some type of injury in these games for the Dolphins. HN would not return to the game, unfortunately. He was diagnosed with a concussion. Uh, but keeping the game action going, uh, we have Tyler Huntley connecting with Waddle. His, his and Waddle's connection was pretty good in this game. Look at this. Big old doink. And then the following Dolphins drive ends in a blocked punt. I mean, the special teams was not in the Dolphins' favor early on in this game. Missed field goal off the upright, and then a blocked punt. And, uh, you know, Jay Bailey tried his best to recover it and, and progress the ball, but to no avail. Uh, here's Kayshawn Booty. Uh, no, that's Rizul Douglas. My apologies. Uh, getting some good yardage, which was set up this field goal for the Patriots. And the kicking woes went both ways. Because here is the Patriots kicker just missing the kick. Just missing. You know, he's not liking that. That could have put the Patriots up 10 to 3. Fortunately, uh, they would have to live with that. Uh, but how about this catch from Raheem Mostert? Welcome back. First time in action. Uh, but some miscommunication. I have no idea exactly what happened here. They called a false start on all 11 players. Uh, what goes over Huntley's head. But luckily, Alec Ingold has the wits to him to go and get on top of that ball. McDaniel is obviously frustrated with that result. Uh, and, you know, he's speaking for all of the Dolphins fan base right there. Uh, but how about Cater Kohu? You know, using the boundary to his advantage and essentially playing uh, receiver here for Jalen Polk. Unfortunately, couldn't come down with the uh, the ball. Uh, and then the following play on third down, this is just before the half. Play as Campbell. Puts a lot of pressure on Jacoby Brissett. Dolphins get a chance to kick a field goal to get within one point before half. And the botch snap. It was bad snap from the very jump. So I don't know what the heck happened there uh, with Blake Ferguson. But... You know, that wasn't good. You know, we keep it pushing. The next, uh, I think two plays later, you have Tyreek Kill almost, almost coming down with this touchdown pass. Uh, unfortunately, he was deemed down. Following Dolphins' possession, third and 13. Dolphins just come up short, and uh, they end up kicking the field goal. So, you know, at this point, it's 9 to 10. Not a lot of scoring going on. Dolphins are finding a way to get this offense moving. Late in this football game. Raheem Mostert, welcome back. Keep on running that ball like that. Alec Ingo gets a big block for Jalen Wright here. Jalen Wright wants to get in the end zone. He would have had his first NFL touchdown there, but the ball goes to the Then we're talking a whole different tune here, uh, but it is what it is. And then on the following shot by the Patriots, just throwing it up, and uh, no one's home. <laughs> oh, man. But there's more. We thought the game would end there. This was in the fourth quarter, late in the fourth quarter. The game got really interesting in the fourth. Ball was moving around. Uh, Jacoby Brissett evades two sacks here, gets the ball off, and connects with, uh, I think it was Butte here. Uh, let's see. Got to double check. Yeah, that's Butte. Uh, yeah, so no timeouts. Got to spike the ball. Next chance for the Patriots. Got to keep these guys within the hash marks. Don't let them go to the boundaries. Clock's ticking, and the Patriots run out of time. And that is how this game ends for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, very, very eventful way to close out this game because should the Patriots had a timeout, should the Patriots had a chance to, to spike the ball, uh, and they would have probably had one more chance at the end zone, I think we could be speaking a whole different story about this game for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, glad that the Dolphins were able to get out of there with a win, but... There's certain things in this game that, you know, made me scratch my head. Uh, you know, the lack of execution on special teams. I think the offense started to step up in terms of what we've been seeing as of late. I mean, getting in the end zone, thank you. Leading for some point in this game, thank you. Like, this is things that you want to see for your team. Uh, but aside from that, the special teams, you have missed field goal. You have a botched snap on the field goal. You have a blocked punt. Like, those are things you can't be having. It's a phase of the game. There's three phases of football. There's offense, defense, and special teams. And if you are not executing on all the, those three levels, you're not going to be a good football team. So uh, hopefully the Dolphins can get these uh, special team errors handled. Uh, you know, I like to see when Jason Sanders performs well and kicks field goals. And, uh, you know, him hitting the upright, very unfortunate. Uh, the botch snap one really wasn't on him, more so Blake Ferguson, the long snapper. 
uh, and then block point of Jake Bailey. So literally all three main special team guys uh, did not have a, they had bad plays throughout this game, which is pretty interesting and funny to see. Um, aside from that, let's get into the box score and we'll hear more about my thoughts on this game. All right, so Tyler Huntley's stats for this game went 18 of 31 for 194 yards. Uh, no touchdowns, one interception, was sacked three times for a loss of 15 total yards. Jacoby Brissett didn't have himself a bad game. Uh, he had 18 of 34, 160 total yards, sacked twice for a loss of 12. And then uh, keeping it going, we have uh, the rushing stats. Dolphins had 193 yards on the ground. That's big time. But guess who? The Patriots had 151 also on the ground. So both teams were trying to run this rock. And I don't blame them because when you're not a good football team, you want to run the ball. Uh, so... Jalen Wright led the team uh, in yardage, but Raheem Mostert had more carries. 13 carries for Jalen Wright, 86 total yards, almost, almost very close to having a touchdown. Uh, Raheem Mostert, 19 carries, 80 yards. Uh, H.N. 3 carries, 18 yards. Uh, Tyler Huntley and Alec Ingle combined for 10 total yards. Uh, and then we look at the Patriots. You know, Ramon J. Stevenson, 12 carries, 89 total yards. He left the, uh, an injury uh, um, and a touchdown. He had that long 33-yard touchdown. Uh, but aside from that, he did leave the game at some point with a injury to his ankle. Uh, very unfortunate. I hope he feels better. Uh, and then Antonio Gibson, uh, he had six carries for 52 total yards. Jacoby Bissett had a 10-yard run. Not overwhelming stats on the passing game for the Dolphins in, in terms of receivers. Uh, but, you know, 194 yards receiving is not that bad. Tyree Kill, six total receptions, 69 total yards, longest of 21. John Lee Smith got heavily involved in this matchup. Five receptions, 62 total yards, facing his former team, the New England Patriots. Jalen Waddle, four receptions, 46 total yards. Raheem Mostert, two receptions, 18 yards. Although Beckham was targeted twice with no receptions, same, uh, Darren Smythe was targeted once, and HM was targeted uh, one reception for negative one yard. Uh, for the Patriots, Demario Douglas, six receptions, 59 total yards. Two. Uh, Keishon Butte, two receptions, 34 yards. Longest of 21, which was that big one uh, in the fourth. Uh, same thing for Hunter Henry, two receptions, 32 total yards. Uh, 25 came from that big catch at the end of the game. Jalen Polk, one reception, 13 yards. Uh, and then the Patriots had four other receivers with at least one reception, all totaling under nine yards. So what does that tell you? This secondary is playing lights out. On top of that, pass rush was getting pressure on Jacoby Brissett. So... Even though these guys may have been targeted, they weren't getting the most favorable balls thrown to them. Uh, but regardless of the fact they, you know, try to do the best of what they can. Uh, aside from that, let's talk about fumbles because there is a lot of them. Uh, we have a Jake Paley recovered fumble. And uh, no, actually he lost a fumble. And uh, Blake Ferguson fumbled the snap. Uh, Aaron Brewer charged with a fumble on that over over his head snap uh alec ingold recovered that one and jason sanders uh recovered the jake ferguson fumble isaiah bolden recovered the jake bailey fumble it was the block punt uh let's keep it moving defensively uh there marcus may was the dolphins leading tackler with nine total tackles five solo he had one pass deflection following him was jordan brooks so uh with uh seven total tackles four solo and then some key stats, we have Jalen Ramsey with two pass deflections, Javon Holland with one. Uh, Javon Holland left the game, uh, didn't really check too much into his uh, his injury update, but hoping everything's okay with Javon Holland. You know, a lot of guys were going in and out of this lineup with some injuries. Uh, you can add Kendall Fuller to that, but he ended up, you know, finishing off the game, which was awesome to hear. Kader Kohu, two tackles for a loss, one pass deflection. Uh, Emmanuel Ogbo, one sack, one tackle for a loss, one QB hit. Anthony Walker, one pass deflection. Uh, Chop Robinson, one QB hit. Heard Chop Robinson's name a little early in this game and then didn't hear it at all for pretty much the rest of the game. Uh, hoping I can hear a little bit more of uh, his name getting called on the broadcast moving forward. Uh, Elijah Campbell, he had a tackle for a loss. Uh, Deshaun Hand, QB hit. Zach Sealer, a sack tackle for a loss and three QB hits. And then uh, Calais Campbell, two QB hits. And then Benito Jones with one QB hit. Uh, for the New England Patriots, uh, not a lot of contribution in terms of 
a lot of guys on the field for them. Uh, but Del Pettis, he had nine total tackles, six solo. Uh, and following him was uh, Daniel Ikule with nine total, four solo. He had half a sack, shared it with Anthony Jennings. Uh, and he had one tackle for a loss, one QB hit. Kalen Hawkins with a tackle for a loss. Uh, Anthony Jennings had half that sack and a, a QB hit. Uh, Marte Mapu had a pass deflection. Christian Gonzalez had two pass deflections. Devon Godchow had a pass deflection. Uh, former Dolphin there. Jelani uh, Tavai, probably said that name wrong, but he had a tackle for a loss. And then uh, Jacqueline Roy he had a sack. Tackle for a loss and a QB hit. Just edging out this uh this defensive sheet here for the Patriots. Uh, Keon White, one pass deflection, one QB hit. And uh, Joshua Uche, uh, one sack, one tackle for a loss, and one QB hit. Uh, in terms of interceptions, Christian Gonzalez had that one interception for a return of two yards. Uh, kick returns, Braxton Burroughs had one return for 19 yards, and Antonio Gibson had one return for 24 total yards. Punt returns, Braxton Barrows had a return for 12 yards, and Marcus Jones had a return for 15. Kicking stats, Jason Sanders went 3 for 4 on field goals, longest of 54. Uh, he didn't kick an uh, extra point because when the Dolphins did score that touchdown, they went for 2, didn't get it. They were trying to make this a, a touchdown game, 7-point game. So, uh, you know, just in case the Patriots did score a touchdown and, you know, try to kick a field goal to force overtime. Uh, and then Joey Sly had... One for two field goals, uh, it was a 38 yarder, and then one for one on extra points. Jake Bailey had two punts. Uh, well, he had three punts, one was blocked. <laughs> uh, for a total of 88 yards, and then uh, one was in the 20, longest of 46. And then Bryce Berenger had six total punts, 310 yards, three to uh, touchbacks, one that was in the 20, longest of 69. All right, so that is all the numbers ran through the whole sheet for you guys look this in no way shape or form is me pounding the table saying the dolphins are back the dolphins are a great team again no far from it far very very far from it uh but they're moving in the right direction and it sucks because it happened the week before they're by you know there are some growing pains and instilling uh maybe this new iteration of the offense with tyler Huntley is a little bit difficult to you know get that chemistry going or uh, just make this offense click, but I liked the approach today Run the ball Have some play action passes get some quick balls out to uh, Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill and it's not a screen pass Get get them going across the field find those open zones I think Tyler Huntley did a lot better this week making those defensive reads and figuring out where to go with this football uh, moving forward you know, help this Dolphins team buys in during the bye week and not, you know, takes the week off. Uh, you know, I want them to keep on trying to develop as a team and, and get this cohesiveness going because they need it desperately. Um, and this is not the time to necessarily, you know, feel sorry for yourself and be like, oh, I need some time off now. I think this Dolphins team needs to buy in right now more than ever. And, uh, you know, moving forward, the defense got to keep on doing what they're doing. Uh, they're, they, they're stifling defense, but imagine if they had an offense that was putting up a lot of points where they can play even a little bit more aggressive, get after quarterbacks, you know, force a lot of these in, in, uh, inherent throws or whatever and uh, enforce these interceptions and, and, you know, just get after that football. Uh, so I think the defense is doing well, uh, but, you know, I want to see them play higher caliber of opponent and see how we go after that because in that Bills game defense didn't look great but at the same time they were on the field almost the entire game uh but aside from that I think the Dolphins did well executing on all sides of the ball except for special teams obviously uh but even then when uh you know when they did actually execute well when they weren't getting their pluck well uh, punt block uh botching their snap on the field goal and getting hitting the pole on the field goal they were doing pretty fine so uh, no complaints on the on the grand scheme of things. You know, you can't really complain too much on a win, but uh, got to be flawless on special teams. Uh, offense, just keep on grinding, keep on improving. Defense, keep on going at it. Uh, I think the Dolphins took a right step today, but, you know, let's hope they, they can recalibrate and get this thing going even better heading into 
uh, week seven. So week six, bye week, no games for the Dolphins this upcoming week. So it's going to suck. I hate bye weeks. You know, don't have my true team to root for, but it is what it is. Aside from that, that's pretty much sums up this Dolphins Patriots game. Uh, hopefully everything is okay with uh, HN. And, uh, you know, we also had Javon Holland go out in this game. And then, uh, yeah, you know, you just want to see this team healthy and you want to see them uh, be their best selves. And I think the Dolphins took a right step in that today. Uh, but in no way, shape, or form is this a game to be proud of that the Dolphins won. Uh, I'm happy they won, but it wasn't the end all be all goal of what I want to see from this Dolphins team. But that pretty much concludes my post game review. Appreciate you guys for watching. And uh, if you haven't done it yet, like this video and comment. Let me know what you guys thought of this game. Uh, you obviously heard my thoughts. I want to hear yours. So catch you guys in the next one.